number one, you know, it does give the, the public the, 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 the citizenship confidence in the judiciary when people see that um, this government institution uh, has many faces of different colors, uh, different genders, um, natural, nat uh, uh, um, national origins, that, um, that it's representative of them and that there is, there is confidence that the decisions that are being made um, are decisions that are going to help everyone and help, and help them. Um, so I think the public is more confident in the, in the judiciary when it is diverse. Um, it's also important because within the judiciary itself, um, many voices from different backgrounds being able to weigh in on different issues, um, you, you will ultimately come to better decisions. There are studies that show that, that uh, uh, diverse groups are better problem solvers than homogenous groups, um, and you can't, you can't dispute the, the math. Um, it, it's been proven. So when we have court governance issues or just issues of the day, the state of the law, where things are going, when you have judges of different backgrounds talking about that and reasoning through that together, you get a better result. There is no doubt about the fact that I think when litigants come in and they see uh, judges of all different colors, uh, from all different backgrounds, you know, big firm, small firm, um, that, that matters. Because I think it gives people confidence that, okay, you've got a shot of, in terms of fairness. But I think it also matters from the perspective of court governance. Because when you have people with different backgrounds and stuff, as the court is adopting policies and all, you have some say so and you bring a different perspective. Because, you know, we all come from different backgrounds and stuff. But having, uh, just people of different persuasions, genders, races, you know, orientations. I think all that is important because you get a different perspective and everybody is not cookie cutter. So we don't all see things, you know, the same way. And I know in our court, we'll have debates and stuff and everybody's voice will be heard. And, you know, we'll take into account a lot of different things as we're making decisions. So I think that's why it's important. I didn't fully realize it until I got there. Um, it's hard to visualize being something if you've never seen anyone who looks like you do it. I was fortunate enough to have a mother, African-American mother, uh, who was a lawyer, uh, as well as other African-American role models who were lawyers and judges. But most people, uh, in my community did not have that. And so you do have to see it to be it for the most part. Um, and it's just the joy of my life to realize that I'm the first person that a lot of people see when they first encounter the federal justice system, uh, especially criminal defendants. It really hit me how significant that was when I first took the bench on my first month uh, of criminal duty. Um, the defendants, many of them African-American, uh, would come in and they would have their heads down and they would stand in front of me and I would say, good morning, Mr. or Mrs. so-and-so, and they would look up and this is arguably the, one of the worst days of their lives. But they would look up and I would just see their faces light up. And I just thought, wow, that, that is incredible that during this terrible time for them, just seeing me sitting on the bench somehow gave them hope or gave them a perspective or a view of our justice system that it's fair that there are people who look like them uh, on the bench. And one of the great things about being a magistrate judge in Brooklyn um, is the Eastern District of New York serves um, over eight million people. Um, Brooklyn itself and Queens are two of the most diverse places uh, in the United States. 
And in our court, we have people who come from all backgrounds, all wealth. Uh, we have um, multi-generation Americans. We have new immigrants. But for the most part, we have people who have never been inside a, a courtroom or a federal courtroom. And um, their first interaction with the criminal or civil justice system is with me or with another magistrate judge. Um, and having, um, and our system is based, is one based on consent and confidence. It's not because um, the military or others say obey the laws. It's because people have confidence in the judicial system. And part of uh, that confidence uh, comes from seeing that the system is fair um, and equal um, and that there's equal opportunity. And that comes from um, having um, diverse faces. Uh, my name is Frank Noel. I'm a magistrate judge in the District of Minnesota. Um, diversity matters uh, for a variety of reasons. Primarily, I've been on this bench for 28 plus years, and uh, today, uh, more than ever, um, the future of the republic depends on a strong judiciary. And there can't be a strong judiciary. The judiciary can't be strong unless uh, it fairly represents all of the deep diversity of the American society that it serves. Uh, in my 28 years, I've tried to reach out and uh, hire diverse law clerks, diverse uh, staff. It's very important that uh, law clerks, um, courtroom deputies, probation, pretrial service officers, uh, docketing clerks, everybody who interacts with the public is the face of the judiciary. And the face of the judiciary must reflect the diversity of the folks that it serves.